In 3.5, we're going to go over systems of nonlinear equations. In the past, we have done systems of linear equations, which was when we had like the three equations and the x, y, and z, and we had to cancel out our x, then we canceled out our y, and then we found z and then plugged it back in. So we're doing the same thing now, but a little bit different. So now we have nonlinear equations, which are equations that are quadratics. So we have, we'll have some x squared. So when graphs of the equations are in a system, when graphs of the equations in a system are a line and a parabola, the graphs can intersect in 0, 1, or 2 points. So the system can have 0, 1, or 2 solutions. So before, we either had no solutions, one solution, or infinitely many solutions. This time, we're either going to have zero, one, or two solutions. So if our line and our parabola don't touch, we have no solutions. If they touch at one place, we'll have one solution. And if they touch at two places, we will have two solutions. And this point where they touch, it'll be a coordinate point. That's how we're going to write our solution. So here we'll have one solution. Here we would have two solutions, so x1, y1, x2, y2. So we're just going to write our solutions as a coordinate point. So we'll either have no solution, we'll have one coordinate point, or we'll have two coordinate points for, no, for two solutions. And then if we have two nonlinear equations, so if we have two x squared equations, so two parabolas, the same thing happens. If they don't touch, we'll have no solution. If they touch in one spot, we'll have one solution. If they touch in two spots, we'll have two solutions. So let's look at our example. So there are three different ways that we can solve these systems of nonlinear equations. One is by graphing. We're going to skip graphing for now, but I'll go over the questions that deal with graphing in the homework. And then the other way is algebraically. And algebraically can either be by substitution or by elimination. So in the past, we solved them through elimination. Today, we're going to go over solving through substitution and elimination. So we're going to focus on the two algebraic ways. So here, we're solving the system by substitution. It tells us what to do to solve it. So by substitution, we're going to take our two equations. We need to solve one of them for one of our variables. So here, we're going to solve for y. And then we take what we find for y and substitute it into our first equation. So in our second equation, how would we solve for y? How do we get this to be y equals? Yeah. We subtract x to the other side because we want it to be y equals. So y is equal to 4 minus x. So all we did was move x to the other side. Now that we have y is equal to 4 minus x, we can take this and plug it into our first equation for y. So we're substituting it in for y. So we have x squared plus x minus 4 minus x is equal to negative 1. From here, we solve, and we are going to combine like terms. What do we need to do first before we can even combine like terms here? Distribute the negative. We need to get rid of these parentheses so we can distribute the negatives. So we have x squared plus x minus 4 plus x is equal to negative 1. Now we are going to combine like terms. So what terms are we going to combine? We have two x's. We only have one x squared, so we'll start with our x squared. 
Now we can combine our x's, so it's x plus x. 2x. And then we have a negative 4 and a negative 1. How do we get that negative 1 to the other side of our equation? We need to add 1 to both sides. So when we add 1 and combine it with negative 4, so negative 4 plus 1, this is negative 3. From here, once we have our standard form equation, we can factor. So do we have two factors of negative 3 that add to positive 2? What are they? Positive 3 and negative 1. So we put these into our parentheses. We have x plus 3 and x minus 1. This is equal to 0. So here we're solving for x. How would we solve for x? What do we need to do next? Equal it to zero. We equal them both to zero. And then we solve them both for x. So we subtract three on both sides for our first one. So x is equal to negative three. And the second one, we're going to add one to both sides. And x is equal to one. So we get these two values for x. Next, we need to plug them in to get our values for y. Because remember, we said our answers have to be in coordinate point form. So we're going to plug in negative 3. What do you think it would be easier to plug it into, the first equation or the second? The second. If we plugged it into the first one, we'd have to plug it into x squared and an x and then solve for y. So it would just be a little bit more work. It's a lot easier just to plug it into the second one. So we want to plug it into our linear equation. Oops. So here we're plugging it in. So we have negative 3 plus y is equal to 4. Now we just solve for y. So we need to add 3 on both sides. So y is equal to 7. How would we write our answer here? Negative 3, 7. We write it as a coordinate point. So we have our x and then our y. And then in the second one, we plug in 1. So we have 1 plus y is equal to 4. We subtract 1 on both sides. So y is equal to 3. How would we write our answer here? 1, 3. So here we have two solutions to our system of equations. We need to combine our two equations and eliminate one of our variables. So the difference here when we have non linear systems of equations, when eliminating, we need to cancel out y. So y is always going to be the variable that we cancel out. So for this example, do we have to multiply any of our equations by something to get our y's to cancel out? No, we can just combine them together because we see we have a negative y and a positive y, so they're going to cancel out right away. So we're adding everything in our equation together. What's 2x squared plus x squared? 3x squared. What is negative 5x plus 2x? Negative 3x. What is negative y plus y? Nothing, it cancels out. And then negative 2 plus 0 is negative 2. Now once we get to this point, we need to factor. So let's move our 2 to the other side of our equation. So we're going to add 2 on both sides. So we have 3x squared minus 3x plus 2. 
Once we get equal to zero, this is when we factor. How can we factor when our first term is not one? What do we need to do here? Divide by three. We would only divide by three if three, if every number here is divisible by three. So if we had a greatest common factor, we would divide everything. But here we have this two, so we can't divide by three. We multiply the first and the last number together. So we have three times two, which is six. Do we have two factors of six that add and give us negative three? The answer is no, we don't. So we can't factor this easily. So Alex, what do we have to do when we can't factor it? Quadratic. So we have negative b, so negative negative 3 becomes positive 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 3 squared, minus 4 times a times c over 2 times a, which is 6. So for these problems, once we get it into our quadratic formula, we always want to check under our square root because if we get a negative, we know we're going to have no solution here. If, remember, if we get a negative, that means we have imaginary numbers and we don't want to deal with imaginary numbers right now. So we always want to check under our square root, solve this. If it's negative, then our answer is no solution. So let's solve it. So under our square root. We have negative 3 squared, which is 9, minus 4 times 3 times 2. It's 4 times 3 times 2. 24. What is 9 minus 24? Negative 15. So if we get a negative, we know our answer is no solution. So this is negative, which means no solution. So we can stop. We don't want to deal with i's here. So if we get a negative under the square root, our answer is no solution. If it was positive, we would keep solving and find what x is equal to and then plug it back in. Any questions on this one? That's a good question. So back to factoring. We multiplied our first and last term because our first term was not one, so we have to multiply the first two to get the first and the last together. So this is six. We need two numbers that multiply to six and add to negative three. Uh, so because we didn't have a one. Right. Okay. So when you start off with a number that's not one, you always have to multiply the first and last terms. Unless you have a greatest common factor, then you can pull out that factor, and then hopefully that would give you a 1 out front. Okay. Thank you. So let's take a look at number 1. So whenever we have a quadratic and a linear equation, we want to solve by substitution. So for this one, we are going to solve by substitution. If we have two quadratics, so two x squared equations, we'll solve by elimination. So for the second one, which one would we solve by? Substitution or elimination? Substitution. substitution, because we have a linear and a quadratic. So this would be substitution. And then the third one, would this be substitution or elimination? Elimination, because we have an x squared and an x squared. So it's only elimination when you have two x squareds. All right, so let's take a look at number one. We already have y is equal to this. So we can already substitute this in for y. So how would we write our equation when we substitute this in for y? We set them equal to each other. So we just take this and plug it in for y. So we have negative 4x plus 8 is equal to negative x squared plus 4. Now our goal is to factor, so we need this to be equal to zero. So what do we need to do now? Take 
Would you what? I'm going to move the x squared over just so I have a positive x. But yes, we need to bring all the terms to one side. So I have an x squared minus 4x, and then I need to subtract 4 on both sides. So this is plus 4. So once I get equal to 0, this means we can factor. Do I have two factors of 4 that add and give me negative 4? No. Negative 2, negative 2. So we have x minus 2 and x minus 2. We could. It doesn't matter because we're going to break them both up. So the question was, can we put x minus 2 squared? We can and solve that way. That would work too. But we're just going to have x minus 2 is equal to 0 and x minus 2 is equal to 0. So when we add 2 on both sides, we get x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 2. So when we get the same answer, this is one of those instances where we have 1, 0. So we don't have to do it twice we're only going to use one. So when we get x is equal to the same thing, we just take one of them. So now once we get a value for x, how do we find y? Plug it back in. Should we plug it into the first or the second? We can plug it into the second. So I'm plugging in for x. So plug it in there. So we have y is equal to negative 4 times 2 plus 8. What's negative 4 times 2? Negative, negative 8. Oh no, it's times 2, never mind. No squared. Yeah. So negative 8 plus 8 is what? Zero. So then what's our, how do we write our answer here? We have to write it as a coordinate point, so we would put our x and then our y, so 2 comma 0. Any questions on this one? So at this point, when you factor, you can always do the quadratic formula and find what your x is equal to, but it's a lot easier just to see that we have two factors of 4 that add and give us negative 4. But you could definitely do the quadratic formula and you would get the same answer. All right, ready for number 2? Yes. So we're going to solve this by substitution. How do we start to solve this by substitution? What do we do? Or we can just subtract 2x from both sides. So y is equal to 5 minus 2x. So once we find what y is equal to, now is when we substitute it back in. So we're going to plug it into our first equation. So now we have x squared plus 3x plus 5 minus 2x is equal to 0. Now we need to combine our like terms. So I have an x squared. I'm going to add my 3x minus 2x, which gives me what? Just x. So x squared plus x plus 5 is equal to 0. Do I have two factors of 5 that add and give me 1? No. So if I can't factor it that way, how do, what do I do? The quadratic formula. So we have negative b, so negative 1, plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times a times c over 2 times a. So once we get to our quadratic formula, we want to check and solve what's under the square root first. So we have 1 minus 
4 times 1 times 5, which is 20. So what is 1 minus 20? Negative 19. So what happens when we get a negative under our square root? No solution. No solution. So once we see we have a negative under our square root, we can stop and we know there's going to be no solution. All right, let's look at number three. So here we said we're going to solve by elimination. So we just need to combine our two equations together and eliminate our variable. Which variable are we going to eliminate? Y. y. We're always going to eliminate y. So are these equations ready to go? Can we combine them together or do we need to multiply it by anything? So let's combine them. Now here, our terms aren't lined up exactly. We see that our y's are not on top of each other. So you just have to be careful when combining your two equations that you are only combining your like terms. So we're going to add our x squareds together. So we have 2x squared plus x squared, which is 3x squared. Do we have anything that we're adding with this 4x? No, so it's just 4x. What happens to our y's? Cancel out. And then we have negative 2 plus 2. 0. So we have 3x squared plus 4x is equal to 0. How can we solve this? Do you have any greatest common factors? Do we have anything in common between this term and this term? X. X. We have an X in common in both of them. So we're going to take out an X. So we have 3X plus 4 times X is equal to 0. So now once we got rid of that x squared, we can just take both of these parts and set them equal to 0. So we have x is equal to 0, and 3x plus 4 is equal to 0. Now we solve for x. So x is equal to 0 is already a solution. We're done there. How do we solve for x in the second one? What do we do first? Subtract 4. So 3x is equal to negative 4. What do we do next? Divide both sides by 3. So x is equal to negative 4 over 3. And x is equal to 0. So now what do we need to do? Plug them back in. So we have x is equal to 0 and x is equal to negative 4 over 3. Which one are we going to plug them into, the first or the second? It doesn't matter, we can plug them into either one, but the second one only has like the 1x squared instead of 2x's that we would have to plug it into, so it just seems like a little less work. So we can plug it into the second. So we have 0 squared plus y is equal to 2. 0 squared is 0, so this is just y is equal to 2. So how would we write our answer here? Zero comma two. Always our x comma y. Okay, now for our second one. We're going to plug in negative four thirds into our second equation. So we have negative four over three squared plus y is equal to two. What is negative four over three squared? 16 over 9. Remember, we have to square the top and square the bottom. So we have 16 over 9 plus y is equal to 2. What can we do next to solve? Subtract 16 over 9. So we have y is equal to 2 minus 16 over 9. We need our denominators to be the same in order to combined fractions. So I'm going to change the 2 to 18 over 9. 
I just multiplied the top and the bottom by 9. So now we can combine our numerator. So what's 18 minus 16? 2 over 9. How would we write this as our coordinate point? What did we plug in for x? Negative 4 over 3. And then what's our y? 2 over 9. So these are two solutions to number 3.